Let's continue talking about document representation and matching. In the previous videos, I introduced two uh, standard concepts, two standard representations, one based on vectors and one based on distributions. So we talked about how to create those um, representations and how to match them and how to rank documents based on that. Basically, you, you get the matching score and then you rank documents according to that score. Let's uh, continue talking about that, but now let's um, take a look at a set of different techniques. So previously, all the techniques were term-based matching. So we, as I said before, we need an exact match of a term in a query and of a term in a document. And even if a query has run in and the document has run, the match will not happen. So that's why you need the same preprocessor. But the problem is much deeper than that. Uh, there are many words that are synonyms. They have similar meanings. So a query may have one word, while the document may have another word, car and vehicle. Uh, there are many words that mean different things in different contexts, right? Uh, a standard example is Apple or Jaguar. And of course, uh, the meaning of the uh, word Apple in a query may not match with the meaning of the word Apple in a document. So in that case, we really want to try to extract semantics of uh, queries and semantics of documents and match based on semantics. Well, that's not entirely possible yet, unfortunately. So there's some approaches and some models that do that. And they still use the same ideas about representing documents uh, as vectors or as distributions. And we start with topic modeling where documents are uh, represented as distributions. Then we talk about uh, latent semantic indexing on analysis, LSI or LSA which is based on uh, vector representations and neural models also use vector representations. So topic modeling. Uh, let's talk about unigram language models again. Uh, we talked about them uh, in one of the previous videos. Now here note that there is no document, just words. Uh, you may have seen this so-called plate notation before here, or you may not. I'll explain to you in a moment. So with circles, we uh, denote, say, random variables. Here, this is a word, or better, the frequency of a word. The, the well, let's say occurrence of a word. And the fact that it occurs in a rectangle uh, with uh, the letter N, that means this word occurs N times. And then this happens m times because there is another rectangle of uh, size m. Uh, you can uh, treat it as follows. And by the way, the shaded circle means we observe this. And the empty circle means we don't observe this. So you can uh, think of it as follows. There is a collection of m documents. Each document has uh, the length of exactly n. And, or, and on every of this n position, the word W may either occur or not. So end positions and documents and uh, the word W may occur in first position, 11th position, 25th position and so on. And we actually observe that because we see these documents. Uh, this is the plate representation of unigram language models. Now let's assume we have multiple unigram language models and they're kind of topical. Uh, we'll discuss later how we can uh, do this, how we can obtain them. But for now, let's say there are four topics, arts, budget, children, and education. And you see that the words uh, are ranked differently. So in arts, we have music and movie and play and opera and so on. In budgets, it's more about finances and so on and so forth. And this is just the top of the vocabulary. Let's say first uh, 15 words or so. Uh, now, the, the word film also probably occurs in budgets, but somewhere very low. So these are two, uh, four language models that have the whole vocabulary in them, but, but the word like Haiti occurs in education, but again, in, in uh, the language model for children it may occur way lower. So we have four unigrams. And now we want to represent a word as a mixture of these four unigrams. So almost the same picture as before. We have a word n times, and that old picture happens n times. 
but we add one unobserved hidden variable, z, which is also a multinomial distribution. That means that whenever, for every document out of m documents, we pick a topic. Yeah, as I said, there are no documents. Okay, maybe let's not talk about documents now. So m times we pick a topic, and then from that topic, we sample n times. So let's say first time we pick a topic children's and we uh, children, sorry, and we sample n times words from topic children. And by the way, it doesn't mean that we only sample these document uh, uh, words. We may also sample words like uh, best and, me and uh, music and education and federal, just with a few uh, lower probability. And then let's say second time we do this process, we pick a topic, uh, budgets, and then we sample from budgets and, and so on and so forth. That's how the mixture of Unigram works. So now let's actually add a document. Now we, we do have a document. This is a document and um, it has words. Now this uh, so-called probabilistic latent semantic analysis, PLSA, assumes that every word in the document comes from a certain topic. Now, uh, here you see the four topics that I showed you before. Uh, arts, budgets, uh, children, and education. But also black, these are mostly stop words and some general words. Maybe let's say there's a fifth topic, which is general. So every word comes from some topic. How is this modeled? Now we do have a document and the document is observed. So we have documents in our collection. So we know the documents and we have M documents. Now, uh, before this unobserved topic was outside this um, this rectangle, but now it is inside. So basically, a document has n words, n positions, like here, from the first position to whatever, to 200 position. So every position, and for every position in a document that is observed, we first pick uh, a random, uh, randomly, we sample a topic from this multinomial distribution, which is not known, by the way. So we sample a topic first randomly, and then from that topic, we sample a word. So here, what is this topic? Sorry, that's education, okay. So for the second word, we randomly picked the uh, topic education, and from that topic, we picked the word William. N now this, I believe that was children. So that was, uh, the, for the third position, we sampled topic children and sampled uh, word Randolph from it, and so on and so forth. So this is exactly what notation means. But now, since we have words and we have documents, we can already use this for representation and matching. How do we do that? We are back to the same probability as before. So in previous uh, lectures, we saw this probability. It was written a little bit differently. It was probability of T given the model of D, but essentially the meaning is the same. What is the probability of a word given a document? And before it was just the term frequency of the word in a document divided by the document length. You remember that when we talked about language models. Now here, it's uh, actually, if you consider this picture, naturally it becomes, well, just probabilistically, it becomes a sum over all topics, the probability of a word in a topic by the probability of that topic. So the probability of choosing the topic, this probability from, uh, uh, certain multinomial distribution for the document, multiplied by the probability of choosing a word from that topic. So this is it, Choos choosing a word from this multinomial distribution for this topic. And uh, that's our, the distribution, well, the probability of a word in a document. So it's still a multinomial distribution, but the way we compute this probability is now different. It's based on topics. Now, why is this good? better than before. Now before, look, we are trying to move from exact matching between terms in a query and terms in the document to semantic matching. So before, if a term, uh, if, if a query term occurred in a document, we did TF of that uh, term divided by document length, and that would be the probability. The higher the TF is, the better. If the term doesn't occur in document is zero, we use smoothen for that. Now, uh, we want uh, semantic matching, 
which means even if the query term doesn't occur in a document, but the document is in general about the topic of the query, we still want this document to be ranked high. And that's exactly what's written here. We basically check where this word, query word, in each topic and how important, so how important a word is in a topic and how important that topic is in a document. So if we have a word, and let's get back maybe to, to this example here. Uh, so we have the query word ch uh, children, let's say, or, or, or better, the query is families, family, doesn't matter. The query is family. And the document only contains the word children and child. It doesn't contain the word family. According to term-based retrieval, there will be no match. According to the topics, it will go over topics. It will take the family and we'll see that the family is actually important for the topic children. So basically, if we go here, we will see that the word family is important for topic children because we, we've just saw it here, sorry. Here we see it's pretty high, but the document only contains children and child, not families, but because it contains children and child, we know that this topic is important for that document. So this probability is also high because the topic children is important for document as it contains children and child. Uh, the word family important for topic, so the document gets high score. That's the whole intuition. So uh, we capture the semantics, but of course it's um, now I assume that this very high quality topics are available in reality, they are not. I will say about that a few words later. But the idea is this, if those uh, high quality topics are available with the Unigram language models for each of the topics, then we can do this and then we have a much better semantic based ranking. Now, uh, the, actually the most widely used uh, approach is called Leiden Dirichlet Allocation or LDA. You've probably even seen it in, uh, maybe in NLP you could see it. Now the picture is pretty much the same as we've seen for PLSA. So we have uh, the document, then from the document uh, for every word we sample a topic and from a topic we sample a word. But what's different now we add priors. We add priors on the documents and we add priors on the words. So basically uh, we pick uh, a document as a multinomial distribution, which is picked from a Dirichlet prior. Then uh, topics are, is a multinomial, well, topics are according to a multinomial distribution picked from the Dirichlet beta. So this is a multinomial distribution. This is a multinomial distribution. This is of size M, this is of size K. These are priors, which are Dirichlet obviously. And then for each position in a document, we pick a topic from this multinomial distribution, which is picked according to Dirichlet prior. And um, for this topic, we already have the distribution of words, multinomial, and then we pick a word from that. Again, this is a multinomial distribution over topics and we pick a topic from that for each position and document. This, and for that picked topic, we have a multinomial distribution of words, this one. And from that we pick, we sample a word. Uh, so in summary, uh, yeah, to, to stop here, sorry. This is just the more elaborate version of PLSA, basically. It's just the same, but with prior distributions not to confuse you. So in summary, again, documents and queries are uh, represented as distributions. It's just this, these distributions are computed differently. Now, of course, these two quantities, the distribution of words in a topic and distribution of topics in a document, they are not known. And that's the hardest part actually. So those topics like children, budgets, um, arts, they are not given, they have to be estimated from the text. But that we will discuss in the next slide and uh, not to forget, of course, as long as we have these distributions, we need to match them. And we use again the QLM 
or KL divergence for that, just as for language models. Now let's let's uh, move into estim estimation of uh, topic models. Just well, I'll give you an idea because this is certainly beyond IR. Estimating uh, this kind of graphical models, especially LDA, is way beyond information retrieval. We just use uh, implemented libraries for that, just to give you the idea. So now uh, we have two multinomial distributions. Um, so we need to estimate this and we need for every document, we need to estimate it because every document is a distribution over topic and every topic is a distribution over words. So all those distributions we need to estimate. Uh, so what do we do now? Um, we only observe words. We don't observe topics. We don't observe distribution of documents, distribution of words and topics. Uh, so we actually write down the likelihood. These are unobserved variables that we want. Oh, sorry, these are distributions. This is observed, this is unobserved. These are random variables. So we uh, write down the likelihood of um, the, well, of our variables that, that should probably be W, sorry, uh, given the parameters and we need to estimate parameters. So Bayesian estimation basically. And uh, we use expectation maximization, so an iterative process where the first step is an E step where we take the expected value of the likelihood or basically of the log likelihood. So we go back, this likelihood, and uh, we take log and we take the expected value. And this is a function. This is not really an expected value. This is not a value, it's a function, it's Q. And then we maximize this function on the M step according to the current values of parameters, but I'm pretty sure you've seen expectation maximization before. I'm just uh, giving you an idea of what happens when we estimate topic models. And then of course we repeat this E step and M step into a convergence. So the most difficult part is actually writing down the likelihood and then uh, finding the argmax. So probably you just uh, do the derivative of that. Um, so that's how you estimate. And as long as you estimate it, all that, you can apply uh, LDA for ranking using probability distributions. 